Hi folks, welcome back to the Creative People Show. I'm Stephen Brown, your host, and I have with me today my friend and actor, writer, producer, director, Buddy Campbell from Arkansas. I want to welcome you to the show. <laughs> I appreciate you coming down a second time. Well, thanks for having me back. I uh, yeah. enjoyed the first trip and yeah. uh, was eager to come back again. Yeah. I had to come, have him come back because we had some technical difficulties in the recording of the audio and I couldn't use it, so we're trying it again. So wh what's been going on with you? Well, keeping busy as always, going all over the place, been sh shooting in several different states yeah. and going to events, and it's, uh, it's been, a, been a fun summer looking to slow things down a little bit, yeah. that'll catch my breath. Yeah, yeah. What was the last thing you did? I uh, did a comedy, my first comedy in a few years, uh, in East Tennessee uh -huh. called Kane Walker and Streaker. I saw the, <laughs> the uh, I'm going to put the, the poster up on that. That's kind of funny. Yeah. They made you up to look older. You had to be a senior citizen at yeah. a senior senior home, yeah. like a nursing home type of place. Yeah, the uh, Rotten Possum Living Center. That's it. Retirement center. That's it. I saw the Rotten Possum <laughs> <laughs> Senior Living Linda, Linda Lee's a great writer. She uh, she came up with that, and uh, <laughs> uh, she said, uh, "I need you to play a streaker." I'm like, "Excuse me, excuse me. I'm yeah. old. I'm not in shape like I used to be uh, 20 years ago, maybe." And she, uh, <laughs> she laughed and said, "No, your character's name is Streaker. Nor uh -huh. Norman Streaker." And yeah. I'm like, okay, I, I can do that. You'd have to. If I really had had a streak, I'd need a body double. But uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> so yeah, uh, me too. I, I won't even do bathing suit stuff. I, so, I nobody uh, wants to see that. Yeah, it's about three three older people in a retirement home who uh, bust out for. Is it a series or is it a around. film? It's, it's going to be a series. If, nice. If it gets picked up, that okay. was a pilot that was okay. shot. But uh, yeah, the two old ladies, uh, their last names are. Uh, Kane and Walker. Uh -huh. uh, one of them uses a cane, cane one, one uses, uses a walker. walker. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, and I'm yeah, I saw a that. streaker. So uh, <laughs> okay. shot, shot that in Tennessee. And right before that, I was uh, in Ohio, shot a short film that I wrote and directed called The Shrew. And you it, wrote it. So mm -hmm. why did you film it in Ohio? Filmed it in Ohio because the uh, uh, friend of mine named Marcia Sloan, she's the mother of Zeb Sloan, a lot of people know him. He's a young man who's very, very talented uh, teenager out of Kentucky. He's uh, making a name for himself all over the place. But he was doing a film uh, in um, in a nearby town in southern Ohio for the mm -hmm. weekend, and she had a lot of people that I knew was in the area, and so she said. It would be great if you can come up to Ohio while we're while Zeb's doing this one film uh, in the next town. Uh, we've rented this historic B and B built in 1808. Ah, uh, okay. And, so the set location. Uh, so she said the set would be great if for a short film if you can do it. And so I cleared my schedule and yeah. came up and uh, wrote a short film on a couple days. Uh, uh, notice and oh really uh, you didn't a couple have notice, written but, but, I, but I did it uh, uh, I wrote it about two days and wow. um, got got it cast and uh, got some people from Indiana and um, Ohio Kentucky West Virginia and all the all the way from Oklahoma I had a girl come wow. come, come to help nice. out with that but that's a yeah that's a period piece set in 1825 okay looking right. forward to it's a little can you uh, say the name yeah it's called the shrew Oh, you already said that. Yeah, the right. shrew, the shrew, not taming of the shrew. No, That's no, a different, no. This uh, is, uh, yeah, this this shrew isn't being tamed anytime soon. <laughs> she, she's a, uh, yeah, she she goes, firecracker. Yeah, she yeah. she goes on a binge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, uh, just so the people know, we were in a film together, but not in the same scene, not even filmed mm -hmm. on the same day. Yeah. Uh, summer of '67. Yep. Yep. Shot that. Um, one of the people that, that was, was in years ago that was in summer of 67 named tina gallo mm -hmm. I remember her she played the soap opera star and she was yeah. actually on soaps herself back yeah. in the, back in the 80s wow. uh, when i was coming back from tennessee uh shooting kane walker and streaker i stopped and had lunch with her in nashville yeah. and and um, so we are actually uh, talking about uh 
co-writing a short film together that she wants to shoot around Nashville. So, so I'm going to be working with mm -hmm. another uh, Summer 67 alum. Nice, nice. Um, so, what was your uh, what was your first acting gig? Well, the first film I was ever in was called Greater. Uh, didn't have any any lines. I auditioned for a character called uh, Redneck Number One. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, it was uh, shot mostly in uh, around Fayetteville, Arkansas. It was yeah. about a Razorback football player named Brandon Burlesworth. True story. It's a incredible story. A great young man uh, who uh, uh, w wanted to be a play football for the Razorback so bad that he was willing to turn down scholarships elsewhere just to be a walk-on at Arkansas and had to scrap to pay his own way there mm. and worked himself up into a starting job and became an All-American by the time he was a senior and drafted by the Indianapolis Colts out oh, yeah. of the NFL. When did that take place, the, the, the setting? Uh, late 90s. 90s, yeah. Like 98, 99. And oh. uh, unfortunately, he was... Uh, uh, killed in a fatal car crash shortly after being drafted by the Colts. Oh yeah, and, but he's yeah. real. Re it's a real inspirational movie. But audition for Redneck Number One, they didn't get the part. Uh, didn't look redneck enough, I guess. <laughs> and uh, so uh, they, but they invited me back as an extra, and I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. You know, never yeah. been on a movie yeah. set before, so. Uh, was it a big budget film or was it? It was. A, it was a SAG film. It wasn't a big budget. It no. was only like a nine million dollar budget. Uh, uh, small That's big for, for around here. Small for a SAG film, though. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, so uh, yeah. uh, Neil McDonough was in it, uh, yeah. Leslie Easterbrook, uh, okay. Nick Searcy, some, huh. some people like that. And so got a chance to meet some, some of them. And the character and, uh, actors. Had, yeah. had a, uh, a, great, a great experience with it, and I just caught the acting bug again because I did plays in high school and college. Mm -hmm. and I never thought they'd take me anywhere after I graduated, so I got a real job in the real world. And yeah. then... Here I am in my mid mid forties at the time, and and uh, saw an open casting call for Greater. Went up there, auditioned, yeah. didn't when, get it. When was that? Did that you, was in two thousand thirteen. Two thousand thirteen, so that was your first professional. That, that that was my yeah yeah, and if you could call it professional, my pay was uh, I got to take one of one of the extra pizzas home afterwards. <laughs> hey. That's pay. That's something. Yeah, yeah. They had a lot of. Yeah. And I mentioned the brand, but they had a bunch of these stacks of pizzas as as I was leaving. You see that a lot in casting calls. You know, no no pay, but you get IMDb credit and and snacks and you know food and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. But Mills. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mills. Uh, copy. Yeah. Copy maybe, of the, may, the maybe, project. Yeah. And they usually forget that part. Mm-hmm. You have to hound them. Yeah, you, you got to, to hound them for that yeah, and, and to get your real footage, too. But uh. Speaking of which, uh, we were both in back-to-back -back episodes of uh, Murder Comes to Town. I was in episode, I think, seven. You were in episode eight. I don't know if it was filmed uh, congruently or consecutively, but... Uh, yeah, five, eight was the one I was in. Yeah, I was told. five, seven. The last face she saw was yeah. the episode Mine title. Mine was Something's right. Not Right, and it was actually based on a true story in 93 in Malvern, Arkansas. Oh, was that the cheerleader? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw yeah. that episode, yeah. Yeah, I was the detect one of the detectives, mm -hmm. uh, Inspector, or Detective. Clouseau. Uh, yeah, I can't think of the last <laughs> name, huh? Clouseau. Inspector oh, yeah, Clouseau. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> And you were a sheriff, weren't you? I was a sheriff, yeah. yeah. I played Sheriff Hyatt, and it was based in uh, Virginia, yeah. a small town in Virginia. Um, these pizza shop owners got murdered, and I was the investigating sheriff. Yeah, and I can watch those. They're on uh, uh, Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. but uh, I can't. I don't have a copy of it you know, to put in my reel. But I drove. They, ca they didn't call me uh, until Monday afternoon. I had to be on set Tuesday morning in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was about a nine-hour drive yeah. from my hometown in mm -hmm. Arkansas, and had to, I didn't leave till like two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, and had a, had a little bit of car trouble, which made the drive even longer around Memphis. But I made it after midnight, and. Uh, 
Yeah, I just wish next time they'd give me a little, a little more, notice. A little more yeah, he no. heads up. Uh, how many lines did you have in that? I didn't. I, didn't I actually that. had quite a few that we filmed, but yeah. uh, I only ended up in the final edit only one. Oh yeah. And I was, I was a little upset about it until um, the next day when some friends of mine I filmed with were on social media and was commenting about how how he was cut out completely. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm not complaining anymore about yeah. my one line. At least I, well, I, at least had I was a on lot national more than TV. I, I had a lot more than I thought I was going to have uh, when I got there. The uh, script had more lines than I had seen before. They had edited it, so my character was in. We fil I filmed for four days uh, with my character there in Knoxville, and they paid for a hotel mm -hmm. uh, and not travel, but they paid for a hotel and uh, decent pay for uh, a, s a role like that, principal, yeah. ro not yeah. a principal, but they, supporting they, role. Yeah, from what I understand, they pay better than a lot of the, the other shows, mm -hmm. similar shows uh, yeah. that are filmed there. It seems like Knoxville is where all of those true a lot crime of them, shows yeah. Are, yeah. are shot. That's my, f my first true crime show uh, that I was in uh, was, um, I'd kill for you, uh, and it was shot. This one was shot in El Paso. Oh wow! That's Long a drive. drive, yeah, yeah. And there was no script. <laughs> it, it was kind of improv, you know. Okay, here's your situation, and just say what you think. You know, talk about this. Yeah. You know. Okay. So we actually, did had have to uh, to speak. It was yeah, uh, I spoke, but because some say of them, something some, like some this. of them will say no lines. It's all sound down. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Or as, or as uh, one director called it, meat puppets. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell the meat puppet where to stand and what to do, you know. Well, my mistake is when they sent me the script on that Monday afternoon, and so I shouldn't be admitting this. I'm reading the script while I'm dri <laughs> driving on I-40 yeah. uh, to Knoxville, and it was a ton of lines. Hmm. And I couldn't understand why a lot of the lines were in bold. Hmm. <laughs> and I get to the hotel, and this afternoon I'm crashing I trying to learn too. all of these lines, and then I get to the set the next day, and I'm like, I hope they let me wing some of this because I don't have it word perfect because it was a ton of lines, and yeah. then I found out that the bold le uh, uh, script uh, lines in the script are the actual people that I'm portraying doing right. interviews. Right. The and real person is talking, you know, they, they show them. And it's you know, guys like me right. who look like them doing the reenactments of it. <laughs> exactly. And so, I did the same thing. Thinking, and, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not going <laughs> to learn all this, you know. And, yeah. and uh, yeah. then I got there and, yeah, it turned out only, yeah, I did about better. seven or eight lines, but, not you know, uh, nothing I couldn't handle. But then they ended up only using one of them. Yeah. But but I did get a lot of face FaceTime, a lot of screen time. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so we've, how many, how many credits have you had or how many roles have you been cast in? Do you know? Any well, idea? Yeah. Well, I've been in like 90 projects. Mm -hmm. uh, that's film, TV, web series, short films, commercial, all of that combined. Have you done any theater since school? No. No? No, I don't. I go time. back and forth. Uh, right now I'm doing a, a musical theater show in Branson and a lot of people don't do that. They either stick with one or the other. Uh, but I, I've learned uh, that there's a difference between doing theater and film. You know, and some people can't make that transition. If you, yeah, if, you, if you're on a movie set and you can pick out the theater actor usually pretty, <laughs> yeah, pretty quick. Usually, because they're really big, you know. Yeah. And grandiose. Mm -hmm. Not me. How are you doing today? I'm like, why are you yelling? This is a movie. Yeah. Yeah. And and more uh, subtle facial expressions. Well, good good news is the theater that we're in is very small, so it's kind of in between. It's not uh, we don't need big over the top mm. stuff, although some of our actors do. Uh, my character is a little more subdued most of the time. I get a little heated at at a couple of points. Cause he's the uh, he's the um, uh, black sheep, quick-tempered black sheep of the family, you know. 
uh, Uncle Stanley is my, my character. Anyway, uh, so yeah, acting in theater, usually you have to be more grandiose and more big with your actions more expressive, so, yeah, so yeah. the people in the back can see what's happening because they can't see your facial expressions or your mouth necessarily. Uh, but in our, in our theater, you can, even in the fifth row, which is the back row. Mm. Uh, our front row is like right there. You know. uh, right. So when, whenever I have a theater actor that's in one of my, you know, first thing, is tone it down. Yeah. It's more nuanced, you know. Yeah, yeah. Especially uh, if you're in close. Don't have to have the back row. Minor here, you, facial yeah. expressions, yes. Yeah, your microphone is right here. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you can whisper it can be here. Yeah. Although, I get so frustrated at some uh, even big budget films and TV because when the actor is whispering I have to turn the volume up loud because I can't hear them or understand them uh, because the I don't know if it's the audio engineer uh, didn't adjust it or what but it's just well, it's a lot of the problems uh, especially low budget Mm -hmm. films is sound uh, mm -hmm. they'll have um, it's probably not during the recording but it's probably in the editing but yeah. but like like you said sound is uneven mm -hmm. some scenes you got to turn up the volume some scenes you got to turn it right. down exactly and even if all of that is good like your like your whisper a lot of times they'll have the musical score up too loud. Right, exactly. And that's what's drowning out your, mm -hmm. your whisper more mm -hmm. than anything that else. Too. Is they yeah. want they want that, that musical score to be, be louder than it should. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that too. Uh so for you uh aspiring filmmakers, keep that in mind. Sound, lighting, uh of course of course you know uh, actors and, and writing are important, but sound and lighting uh, can make or break a film. You know. Script supervisor, very, Script. very underrated. continuity, that kind of thing. Yeah. But your um, your 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 set designer, your your um, you know your production manager. Yeah. They do all the heavy lifting ahead of time to get yeah. everything in place. Pre-production. Yeah. So uh, uh, one of the first things you want to do is get a get a experienced. Uh, um, uh, pro uh, production manager to uh, uh -huh. handle all that ahead of time that knows what they're doing. Yeah. Um, so, what do you have coming up that or that's coming out soon? I know you mentioned something before we started. Uh, if you say what you can about it, I know it's. I have. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Hush, I'm, hush. Pr I'm proud of a series that uh, we shot in. Um, in the Dallas Fort Worth area earlier this year called Vindication. Mm -hmm. I've been a, seeing a, a lot faith, about that. It's a faith-based crime series um, that's in the second season right now. It's yeah. on uh, Pure Flix, Amazon Prime, and a few other platforms that people can find it. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I have a just a tiny role in the season finale of, of it, but uh, uh, it's I can't say anything more than that, but yeah. it's a it's a yeah. great series, and people need to. Uh, it's being picked up for a third season. Uh, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. So we're looking. Uh, I know. I'm, I'm very uh, I'm very proud of that, but that's something that people can watch right now. T C Stallings is in that now. T C is a yeah. regular in season two. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I saw him in that because uh, of course I follow him because we're we're both uh, A M T C grads. He graduated like a year or two before I did from AMTC, Actors, Models, mm -hmm. and Talent for Christ. And uh, yeah, he's out of Louisville, he told me uh, when I was on set with him. And uh, it's the first time I'd met him. Uh, but uh, Todd Terry is the star of Vindication, does mm -hmm. a great job. Peggy Schott plays, plays his wife. Um, uh, Venus Monique is in it, uh, mm -hmm. Steve Mokate. Uh, and you have some other people that you may know with some recurring characters in season two. Candace Kirkpatrick is probably actually I think she's in every episode of season two. But Stacy yeah. Stacy Bradshaw is in it. Oh, okay, yeah. So she has uh, comes back for that. Uh, she had a, 
Uh, I think she was in one episode of season one, but they brought her back for a couple more episodes of this one. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Holmes is in an Iowa actor who's, yeah. who's, who's really good. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very proud of uh, being, being a part of Vindication. Nice. Yeah, that's that's a big thing. Uh, now, I mentioned how many roles you had now. Uh, I think you have like something like 50 something on IMDb. Yeah, I think it's up to 62. Right 62 now. now. Wow. Uh, yeah. See, on IMDb, you only get a, f a part of what you have actually been in uh, because they don't list commercials they don't list web series normally sometimes some independent things don't list uh, but uh, well there's a, a lot of times the producers don't even put anything on on IMDb until it's released so, right or, or close to being released right uh, but then I have some on there that's been there for years that's never going to get made I know so me it too kind of offsets yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sets I got a that, couple of but, those but I have actually been to set 90 times yeah, wow. Um, o over the years. And uh, and you still have a day job. Still have the day job, yeah. I don't that, know how you do it. That's the one, yeah, that's that's the one that actually pays. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> I do too. Uh, yeah, yeah, I work. The uh, independent, as you know, the independent film world is, is uh, you usually doesn't pay enough to make a living. Everybody's mm -hmm. got to have a day job somewhere. Yeah. Someday I would like to. Someday. Be acting full time. I don't need to be a star. I, you know, y you see all these character actors who have done 100, 150 roles on, on IMDb. And of course, much more than that total. Mm -hmm. But uh, the ones that are, and you've seen them on TV and films and stuff, and you recognize their face. You may not recognize their name, but working character actors are the ones right. that get. I just want to make a living at yeah. it. Yeah. I just. Uh, want to be able to retire early from the day job and <laughs> yeah. just work in this industry full time yeah. you know I don't need the fame and fortune yeah. and just 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 survivability well uh, I'm I'm I'll take the fame and fortune if it yeah comes, if it comes uh, your way you just kind of work toward that but uh, not it's, necessarily the fame, it's not but yeah I'll take the fortune because me and you we're at an age and in, in our we're, we're more character actors and mm -hmm. fate you know in our face and so forth and that most producers and directors uh, would put us in. Well, that's uh, one reason why I was kind of reluctant to get back into acting. You know, I was out for 20 some odd years mm -hmm. and uh, I did the movie Greater, like I was saying earlier, but that uh, I thought was just a one off, you know, I'll do, yeah. do this. But when I got there, I caught the bug again, went to um, Melissa Moody, uh, she, uh, she uh, an acting coach in, in Little Rock and t took classes with her mm -hmm. and she was I'm like I don't know if I should be doing this or not here mm -hmm. I am in my 40s and yeah. uh, most of the people in your classes here are teens or 20s mm -hmm. she I said know. well let me tell you, tell you something <laughs> your chances of getting work is at your age is better than these young people. I'm like, how's that? How's that possible? She said, well, when you go to, uh, if they if they're casting a 22 year old, you're going to see a a room full of about 50 or 100 yeah. Yeah. applicants. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of auditioning yeah. for that. If they asked for a 45-year-old janitor, she said, it's going to be you and about one or two others. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, she was right. She was right. I, yeah. You know, uh, there's people told, when I told friends and coworkers I was getting into acting, started taking classes, they're like, oh, you're just waste, wasting your money and your yeah. time. You know, yeah. you're not, you know, you, you don't look like a leading man. You're it's, not ha no. handsome or fit or, or got that got that got that look I or anything prefer, like that. I prefer watching films and TV that have real looking people in them, mm -hmm. you know, just normal everyday people, not the fashion model type, you know, pretty uh, looks because that's distracting to me because it, it doesn't. But that's what I told them I, that that even your big budget Hollywood movies only has three or four of those people you just described, you mm -hmm. know, of mm -hmm. the Hollywood leading man types. Yeah. You know, but every one of them has dozens of 
plumbers and bartenders and uh, every, everyday everyday Joes, you yeah. know, that look like normal people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that's that's what I do is uh, you know. What's your what's your type? Do you know? Uh, my brand, as they, <laughs> yeah, as they call it, an act, brand. acting coach call. call oh it. yeah, some people don't like the word type because yeah, yeah. typecasting is a yeah. negative negative uh, connotation. Yeah. But I think it's a positive thing. Yeah, I have no problem with saying what type am I, but yeah, it's usually authoritarian authoritarian figures. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm a I'm a big guy, uh, and so I'm imposing in a, in a shot. So mm -hmm. I may usually plan. A, you know, some type of bad guy, villain, a, mm -hmm. a lot of times, or I'm playing the cop, yeah. a teacher, a lawyer, you know, some, yeah. someone of authority. I noticed you played some government figures, mayors mm -hmm. and councilmen and things like that, you know, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of mine too. I've played a lot of cops, dads, uh, I'll be, you know, I am a grandfather, but I haven't, I think I've only played one grandpa in, uh, in films, uh, so far, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I, it was kind of a shock the first time I showed up on set one time, and I was, you know, I was supposed to have had a grandchild, you know, which I don't have any kids in real life. Oh, yeah. life yeah. So, uh, but but the girl was fourteen. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and she goes, "Who are you?" And I told her my character, and she goes, "You're my grandpa." I'm <laughs> like, "What? I'm not old enough to be your grandpa." <laughs>